welcome everybody. I'm glad that you're here. Um, uh, my name is Sarah Dean. I'm the executive director here at uh, South Bay Musical Theater. And thank you if you are new to the SBMTE studio. Uh, we are offering, we've pivoted to an online program and um, are offering classes and workshops and lectures. And like tonight, a behind the curtain peek at the wonderful world of prop design. So this is one of my favorite props that was used in our production a year ago of Gentleman's Guide, um, who just came back to visit me again today and will eventually return to our theater. So we, with me tonight is Barbara Henninger, who is um, a Jill of many trades. She has been everything from props designer to a, mostly a performer, um, an assistant director. She was the board chairman. She has been the board secretary and a, a little bit of everything and everything in between. Um, so Barbara, thank you. We're glad that you're here. And then she is joined by Patricia Bellello, who I met um, just about a year ago. And when I met Patricia, her eyes just, we started talking about props and I've never seen it before that her eyes just kind of lit up and sparkled and immediately drawn into the tricky world of props design. Um, it is a, a one of the hardest, harder design uh, elements of the theater, primarily because it is so very exacting. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Barbara and Patricia. Thank you so much. and. Uh, uh, Barbara, go ahead. Um, well, Michael is Michael Hirsch, who you can't see, but I can already see him in the chat, is going to push the buttons for the slides. So this is me and Patricia and Sarah, but and and Michael. Next slide. <laughs> okay, I actually had to look this up. I knew that prop was short for property, but I didn't know why. So it turns out since at least Shakespeare's time, theater com companies used to provide some of the things the actors use, like weapons in a good Henry VIII. So these objects were the property of the theater and it got shortened to prop or props by the 1800s and prop in 1911. So that's where that word came from. It's a property of the theater. It is not, it is not a costume, something that you wear, um, it's not a set piece. Right. And you had your role for that, Patricia, is? Yeah. If, if it touches the stage, it's, uh, uh, it's not a prop. So whatever it doesn't touch the stage is a prop. So if the table is part of the set, the cup on top of the table is the prop. Right. Uh, that is what I used to measure to define what is uh, the prop of the set, the difference. So those, those props are what make things on stage real. Yes, so it makes it yeah, real and also the, the whole, I mean, doesn't mean you cannot have a play without props. You can, but having the props make it more real, real and more uh, relatable mm -hmm. uh, when the actor, the performer have something in the hands that he can use and make it the scene more real. So Michael, if you push the button again, I think we'll get the highlight of there. There's a wonderful prop from She Loves Me. That was a music box. And that's a prop. That's how it works. Okay. And that's you, right? <laughs> Next. Okay, so how do we get into it? And Michael, you can push the button again and it'll highlight some of the props that Patricia brought to mm -hmm. one show. So Patricia, you can talk about how you got into props. Yes, my kids start to do uh, children's musical theater at CMT uh, and always volunteers are needed. So I try everything backstage that I could possibly do, um, from ushering to costume to no light because pot likes so high. <laughs> I am afraid of height, but I try everything and hair and make and I, I, I'm not very good with that. And finally, I don't know how I ended up in props and I love it. Uh, I don't know what caused me. I really don't know, but it's something. It's the little details that make the whole uh, production. That and and I love it. I don't know why, but something. That, so I started to look for uh, productions that I can help with, and ended up I ended up uh, doing props like for a living. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you've done you've done shows a lot of shows with. CMT and other groups, but for SBMT, uh, you first came to us with Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. 
Yeah, yeah, I did that before, and I love that show. So I I look up for companies who need a prop designer, and I find that uh, SB, the, the, you are going to do a gentleman's guide again, and I say, okay, I have to do it again, yeah. and I reach out, and here I am. Okay, next slide. Um, I actually started by volunteering things that I happen to own as props for different productions to one of the main props designers for SBMT, Ruthie Stein. Um, and if you push the little button again, you'll see that is a 1920s typewriter I inherited from my mother. It has been on the SBM sta t stage four times, so it has its own bio now. And that was when it was in Maine. I've only officially been a props designer for Peter and the Starcatcher in 2018. Next slide. So rules of props, mm -hmm. do your research, right? Gotta yeah, ask the, the most important thing is uh, read the script, the, uh, the script first uh, and locate the time because uh, I mean, a glass, it can be different from 2000 than in 1800. So what is the time of the play is very important. So you have to do your research. And sometimes a couple of years make a big difference. So you have to be really uh, know about the, the time the play is. And you want to you want to give people options. These were mm -hmm. uh, spy glasses that we had in the SPMT props loft that I brought for Peter and the Starcatcher because we mm -hmm. didn't know. Did you want this beautiful brass one, but somebody could break it, or do you mm -hmm. want like a cheaper plastic one because it's going to get tossed around? In this case, we used the beautiful brass one because it wasn't getting tossed. But mm -hmm. that kind of goes to the last one. Be ready to fix it or replace it yeah. during a show. Yeah. Have, and we have a picture of that later. Uh, next slide. For the performer, be gentle. Mm -hmm. Always put your props away. And the last one, I have another animation for that. Yes, if it's not your prop, don't touch it. Please. Not. It yeah. is not yours. Don't do don't. it. Yeah. That's like, you could buy t-shirts with that slogan on it. So, <laughs> next Next slide. So this is really going to be the outline uh, for the whole presentation. So you're going to create your props list. And then next, you're going to start talking to other people and watching what's going on the set to see what else is needed. Um, you're going to look in the prop shop. You're going to borrow it from other people, or you're going to build them. We try yeah, them sometimes, out. Yeah, yeah sometimes um, when you make your list, the director have another idea of what it is the props he wants or they weren't all read. Uh, so all these steps goes hand to hand with the director notes. Um, yeah. So you do your research, make your list, but always check with the director or the choreographer and because sometimes in the script doesn't say the dancer need like a button or something like that is no in the script so that you don't have it in the list but the director is gonna say okay no we need this and this and so you have always to check with the design the other designer the director the choreographer and everyone involved in the production so mm -hmm. sometimes your list is not enough you have to make it really complete yeah, and color and things like that can make a difference. Yes, and also uh, that the last point you put uh, over there, try them on rehearsal because sometimes you say, oh, this is beautiful, it's perfect, but when they use it on the stage, you see that it's not useful, it breaks, it's not, it's not where you're supposed to be. Uh, so sometimes you have to change plans in the middle of rehearsal because of that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, again, you're going to, you're you're often there for every show because mm -hmm. you have to be the props runner and make sure that people have their props and fix them if they're broken. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will stop that now. Um, okay. Goodbye, spam call. <laughs> All right, next next slide. 
Okay, so we have some pictures here, I think of this, of the, the list. This was the list for Peter. This is actual part of the list that the director gave me for Peter and the Star Catcher. Um, that's a strange show. <laughs> and there's a lot of crazy things that happen in it. Like I want a Jolly Roger Pat pirate flag, but I also want a pineapple that has to be thrown and break in half um, when somebody hits it. So later in this talk, we'll take a look at the gull and also some spears that a particular group of people had to use on stage. And the description was ridiculous found and rubber or soft objects on the end of them which wasn't quite what we ended up with. Uh, next one. So this goes to what Patricia was talking about. Mm -hmm. If you, if you go, if we go to the next uh, images. So in gentleman's guide, there were these guys lifting weights on stage. So, oh, look, we need weights. Um, and the next one, uh, what was, what show is this? The early modern Millie, there's a dance number and they all have to have newspapers. And, and they fact, have to look the same and you have to look the, the period and you have to have extras because when they dance, usually the break. Yeah. So yes, it's no easy. And then sometimes you discover you need to help dress the set. So mm -hmm. that was something that actually, I think Sarah ended up doing a lot for um, She Loves Me. Yeah. All the, you want to talk about those bottles? <laughs> Set dressing is one that that often falls between um, props design and and is it what we the list that we call is it set or is it prop? Um, so for she loves me, which takes place in a in a, per, a perfume shop um, in thirties hung oh god Hungary yeah Budapest. Thank you. <laughs> it was it feels it was February it feels like three years ago. Um, so we, uh, you know, each of the bottles in that in that middle circle had to be um, shopped for, found, and then we made labels individually and put them all on each of the individual bottles. Now this was just one column of about four or five on that whole set. Then all of them had to be glued. Most of them had to be glued. Some of them needed to be Velcroed so that they could be taken off and on and used um, mm -hmm. for the the. And the nobody sees that, but. <laughs> it yep. makes it real for the actors. The actors knew. I yeah. knew. Yeah. Uh -huh. And actually, that wreath over there, we use it for gentleman's guide and top of the coffin. Well, and, and the wreath was actually purchased for um, Big River and ended up getting cut uh, just because of kind of the design element didn't work. So we, we saved it, and it actually right now lives on my front door. Because <laughs> That's, yep, that's, how <laughs> that's how these things work. That's how these things work. All right, that, next one. So, of course, the other thing we do, we talk to other theaters. Um, we will look at the props loft. So that's the staircase up to our loft. And then when you go in there, you can find all kinds of interesting things, like this crazy mask that looks like something for maybe South Pacific or funky old lamp or pottery or... We got a, a uh, antique doll, yeah. so there's a lot of stuff up there. It's fairly sizable. The number of tubs, every and everything, delightfully organized by a, a mass of volunteers who we are super grateful for. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, there's one tub of just grapes, which you need <laughs> if you do yeah, kiss me. Right? You need them if you do kiss me, Kate, because there's this whole <laughs> scene where they sing a song and they're pretending that there's. Stomping grapes. Yep. All right. Next, um, fine props. Sarah, you can speak to this. Um, my my specialty is finding the stuff on the street, and uh, repurposing it for for the theater and for its. So um, the middle picture is from My Fair Lady, which was back in 2017, and this was the first show that I was involved with. Um, and was literally driving down the street in my neighborhood and stopped, looked at this couch, and went. Hey, that's perfect. So we painted it white. Um, and normally if I find something that I like, I'll snap a pic and uh, text it over to uh, the designers or the director or both. Um, again, the the picture on uh, that's from Gentleman's Guide, the black and white one of the small table was one too that we just kind of grabbed and said, well, we're not quite sure if this is right, but it feels like it could be. So we're gonna hang on to that. 
that one ha happens to be double-sided. Um, so, and it goes from Monty's poor apartment, which is what it's looking right now. And then later in the show flips. Um, and so we had the same, we were able to use that same unit for uh, for both of those purposes. Um, and then my one of my favorite stories is we, we moved into the theater on our load-in day for She Loves Me. And I was in charge of finding a shelf unit for, for the workshop. And I hadn't been successful at all. I was driving home after a long day and I went, oh man, I still don't have a sh uh, shelf for that, for that darn unit. And I pull into the street that I live on and there right in front of me was the perfect shelf in the perfect size. And then I filled it all. If you can see the little um, tchotchkes on the shelves herself, most of those are pulled from my house. So all the little details ended up just kind of fitting in. You get a little creative in figuring out what works and um, tweaking things and repurposing as much as we can. The, the other note on that table that uh, Marie or, or Amalia is sitting at was backstage at the theater that we looked at and went, hey, with a paint job, this will work just great. So yeah. It's the magic of the theater. I don't know why it's something is, it, oh no, it's, it's not working, it's not working. And suddenly the whoop, there you go, you have it. I don't know what it is. But it's magic. I say it's magic of the theater. Yeah. The theater. the right piece in the right moment. Yeah. You so, need that piece. You need that piece. And oh, there it is. That, there that, it is. Yeah. That's great. Okay. We have two questions. So I thought I'd stop and answer both of them. Um, Sasha asked if, uh, how do we contact other theaters? It, it's really knowing people at other theaters. Uh -huh. um, you'll You'll know. So sometimes you know them or sometimes you look and say, oh, they did this show before. So you write to um, whoever there's, they might have someone in charge of production or they might have an executive director like Sarah um, and you go that way. And after a while you start to have just personal contacts. Yes, I think that the, in the Bay Area there is a theater community uh, and all the designers, we know each other, and sometimes we change roles, sometimes we are costume designers, sometimes we are prop designers, so we know everybody. So that is why how we contact that. Yeah, that, so that's a lot of it. And then of course, there's also like the um, Google group, you can yeah. post things in that. Mm -hmm. um, someone else asked, uh, is it best to get your props out as early as possible during rehearsal? Personally, I think yes. What do you think, Patricia? Yes, I prefer to have everything ready as soon as they, they start with uh, running the show. Staging, uh, or, yeah. yeah, so I, usually I have like a rehearsal prop if I don't have the actual prop. Uh, so to have a sense of how the play goes and everything. But yes, ideally, have it earlier is better than later because all the changes and during rehearsal can uh, say, no, this is not working. Uh, it's better to have it earlier. Right. To solve that kind of problem that can show up. Yeah, for, for um, Peter and the star catcher, there's a thing where they have this bird. They interact with a bird on the island. And so two of the actors basically use this bird kind of like a puppet. So I found mm -hmm. a little small bird puppet and I brought it in. I said, isn't this cute? And they said, yeah, we'll try that. And eventually the, the uh, director said, no, you know, I want this to look more like it's something found, an object found, and they, by their imagination, they make it into a bird. And so it was a yellow rubber glove. And so we had a big bag of yellow rubber gloves backstage. So if they ripped, we could have another, but that was the bird, a yellow rubber glove. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't brought that other one in earlier, I wouldn't have known I needed rubber yeah. gloves. <laughs> So, um, next one. Oh yeah. Okay. I had to make spears for characters and their language is Italian words for food. So they're running around yelling pasta, um, lasagna, you know, I'm like, what? Okay. So I took cooking utensils, which we had, a lot of these were from backstage, but some of them like the wooden mallet there or the metal sieve. Uh, the metal um, uh, lemon squeeze, squeezer, those were actually from my kitchen. I got some PVC there pipes. For the conflict of... Yeah. So my husband could go, there goes our hammer. Well, there goes our... <laughs> so got PVC pipe, painted it brown, taped the things on with brown tape, Again. and then got <laughs> green leaves, 
that we put yeah, over it. Um, then I got green leaves and taped those on as well. And, and the other picture shows what they look like on stage. So it's kind of a silly thing, but they looked good. I had to fix them a lot. They would come untaped. A small little detail that, uh, you know, again, most people would be hard pressed to see, but if you were watching the show, it would, and you made that connection, it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, they just saw that they had spears and that they were kind of silly, so. Subtle, subtlety, um, is a props person's <laughs> MO. <laughs> this is the right way to say it. Can't so, start. next one. Oh, yeah, talking about doing it for the period. So, you can show Patricia, you had to get this stuff together. Yes, and I actually, they will separate, separate parts. So, I have the pen and then I bought the, the dryer. And yeah, that's a, yeah, so does I. Does anybody know I, what that's for? Everybody know what that's for? It's for drying your ink after you write with it, yeah. pen and ink. So I, I, I fixed that set all together from different pieces. So, yeah. And the, the other thing, I'm sorry, I didn't ha add that picture, but the, there was also a checkbook. And yeah. Patricia made a whole checkbook that looks like a real, not the kind of checkbooks we have now, but the checkbooks they would have had in the Edwardian period. With checks and everything, and you can rip off and nobody sees them. <laughs> but Michael got to use them, and yeah. for him, it was real, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next one. Oh, yeah. The famous... The scooter. scooter. Yeah. The, so, uh, the director can... once, Michael, to come in and drive in a scooter. I don't know why, but the scooter is now in the period of the gentleman's guy. So I have to fix, I actually have it here. I have my daughter's scooter. So I put some paper that look like uh, wood and paper and paint. And there you go, a period scooter that doesn't exist, but there it is. You have it. So if, you, if it doesn't exist, you have to make it. Right. Yeah, that was There's funny. Michael riding his scooter, his period scooter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, next one. Ah, the B frame. Oh, the B frame. Yeah. The, they have to show it like, like this. One second. Uh, the beekeeper have the bees here, the bees. I don't know what it says. Uh, so I was thinking, what can I use so uh, making association with the images and and I figured that a filter, an AC filter, have the same shape. So I put some paints and mix it up, and those are beans that I paint with a sharpie uh, to have the beans that nobody sees on, from <laughs> the audience. But there you go, you have the. And those of us who handed off those props backstage yeah. mm -hmm. did see that they had bees. So, <laughs> and thank you, Kathy Switke, for saying they're amazing because Kathy Switke is a beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, sli uh, next slide. Oh, yes, food for Gentleman's oh, Guide. Yeah, that was supposed to be meat. It's foam. It's foam carved yes, up a little it's bit foam and painted. painted. And the other is soap and that kind of foam for the uh, AC. And yeah, I don't know. I mix everything. I, I go to Home Depot and say, okay, inspire me. Inspire me looking for something that, oh, this can work and mix it up and do whatever. Yeah. yeah, that that the whip the whipped cream it's hard, but it's that stuff that you that you squeeze into like the space the in the pipes. wall when you have to yeah in yeah. the space yeah the pipe. So I don't know what they use it for. I use it for cream. <laughs> Expanding foam. Expanding. Right. There we that's go. It. Yeah, that's the word. That's Thank it. you, Lisa. And um, I think we actually used the expanding foam for the pineapple that came apart because it was a plastic fake pineapple. When we opened it up, it was hollow. So I filled it up with expanding foam and then painted it yellow. And that was a half of a pineapple. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. I'm watching the time. We're... Oh, yes. 
You can click the link and show the video, and then I can also show the actual um, go. But that was my test run of a gull that an actor has to fly across the stage for like 30 seconds or something. It's just a cross. And that was the goal, actually right here in this very office. So, um, but if you, if we go back, or if you can see me here, here he is. He's actually um, the size of a small goal. There are goals that are about as big as this. And I found the uh, instructions for making the goal on the web. A nice man in India explained how to build a goal, which you were going to put outside your house and on a pole, and it would look cool. So there's a lot of interesting things you can find on the web. Um, and it's just, actually, I should show that close. It's just styrofoam, and I, I drew on it with, um, not charcoals, uh, pastel to draw the feathers. So next slide. Oh, yes. My favorite. We where did you guys borrow this from? From well, CMT, right? Yeah, it was a gift gi gift to us from Children's yeah. Musical Theater, who said we're not keeping it because no, you know, we, there's no use for it in any other future show. Um, and there's and there's the head which you have you showed at the beginning of the oh, of, of the show. There's, He's, you know, now I have somebody to talk to in my yeah. home office. <laughs> So now if we click the link to watch the video, you'll see what happens. I'll be quiet. The, there should be audio. So try them out. Oh, yes. So for Peter and the Star Catcher, I forget what the images are here. Oh, yeah. I brought some random things because they had a battle and they wanted random objects to be the weapons. So there was a fish in our props loft, which I stiffened by putting a coat hanger through it. And Brett Carlson said, yes, I want the fish. So then Michael Champlin said, if he gets the fish, I get the rubber chicken. And they had a battle between a fish and a rubber chicken. It was very effective. And when the rubber chicken comes in, Michael squeezes it and it goes, <laughs> well, he's killing it. So, Gentleman's Guide. Oh, this was a rehearsal where they're holding some of the crazy stuff, including the infamous bee hat, which I think was actually a costume piece, but... <clears throat> um, so yeah, you let everybody try it out and you see what works and you know, if the suitcase is too big, you make it smaller or vice versa. Um, Something needs to be changed. Yep. Next slide. Then you run the props. So Peter and the star catcher in act one, all of the props are back, backstage and the actors are picking them up and using them. But after act one, Almost all of them come off and they go back into the props room, which is actually one of the dressing rooms. And so top of the show, it's really empty. And I know I've done my job. Middle of the show, I better have a lot of stuff in my props room or something was forgotten. Yes, and usually running the show in the theater is different than the rehearsal hall. Uh, because sometimes you have to adapt to the ins and outs. So sometimes you you're thinking that this probe come from the left and then they're coming in from the right. You have to adapt that kind of stuff and take rehearsal. That yeah. happens too. So, so usually whatever you're planning to do um, backstage, uh, it changes in rehearsal. Yeah. So you have to yeah. be there during tech week. So. This bird, had I had that 
run it around from one side of the stage to the other, which at SBMT means going around the outside of the back of the building. Because it started on one side and went out the other end. Um, and then it would be in the way if it was on the other end. So I had to go and grab it and carry it away. So every night, come on, bird. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, here's the dining scene for Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Oh, there the... was a lot of food and plates and... Ugh. Yeah, so they would they would get set up for the beginning of that dining scene, and then actually during the dining scene, the actors were carrying things on and off, and mm -hmm. the props designer was in the back, which our props runner for that show was Barbara Gutz, mm -hmm. and she would be handing stuff as the know, actors yeah. brought stuff down. And you have to pass them back and forth without dropping those very noisy lids. <laughs> so, um, and then you have to fix them. Oh yeah. The so, food is all, yes, I'm glued. So there was Barbara one night gluing fish back onto the plate because they were falling off. Uh, next slide. After the show is closed, of course, you mm -hmm. have to return the props and put them Everything. away. And that's a long the process. Top of the show the next day. Yep. Over again. And what about in the pandemic when we're doing Zoom things and everybody's at home? Yeah, there was a question, like someone asked something about that, the pandemic. Um, it's interesting because right now all the shows, not all the shows, but most of the shows are going virtual, so we have to adapt. Uh, yeah. there so is, this uh, is the, the image here is from when SBMT did The Importance of Being Earnest, and I was playing a character, and so I had two props, actually I had three props, I had a, had a cup of tea also. But I had to keep them right there on my little quote unquote stage, which is actually this room with a green cloth behind me mm -hmm. um, and pick them up and use them. But Patricia did an amazing thing for a children's theater, right? Of no, it was for, for a starting arts dream team. Starting arts. Yeah, so, they, they started slide? rehearsal in January for Little Shop of Horrors and they have to reimagine everything to go uh, virtual. So the other two, instead of have the big plant, I make a scale piece, set piece. So I did the set, the, the store, uh, and Audrey was a, a puppet that one of the performer ended up uh, working with it in the video. Yeah, so if you see the video, here's an example. That's my son. Hi. <laughs> He's trying. So there should be something so, to start it. Yes, with. to play. There we go. I, that, I was trying, you know, and see, uh, because Adri has to eat the camera. So that was the, the idea. So here we were trying how to make it work. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that, that may be props in the future um, is the props designer is going to have to provide maybe the same prop twice to multiple people because they mm -hmm. hand it back and forth in a scene. Yeah. Um, we don't really know, but uh, we're just making it up as we go. Yeah, sometimes they pass one of the, the props to another person on the cameras. So you have two pieces, two books or two whatever. Yeah. So they can pretend they are passing the piece. Uh, so yeah. It's time to adapt and be more creative. Uh, looking for solution right now. Anyway, that's the end of our slide deck. <laughs> if anybody has any other questions about about props, and I'm looking at the at the list here, I think we got all the questions answered. But if you have other questions that occurred to you. Feel free, stick them in the chat. Oh, there is a... Oh, Kathy, with new props for every show. Yes. How does a company decide? We were talking about that just before the show. SBMT, for example, has a huge stack of ukuleles and tambourines. I don't know why. I don't know what show they were used for. <laughs> so 
we were talking about today that maybe we should donate them to a school because we haven't used them. So really it's just, if you haven't used it in like five or six years, you might say, yeah, why yeah. is this taking space? <clears throat> how, how do you decide Patricia for your garage? I don't decide, <laughs> I keep everything. <laughs> Yes, it's hard. I mean, it's sometimes, no, I really, I'm not going to use this. I'm sure I'm not going to use it. Uh, but I can throw it away, you know, I don't know, it's hard. It, it yes, is hard. That is my, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I know for theaters, uh, for companies, it's hard. If you have the space, perfect, you can keep it. But the problem is the space. But yeah, yes, we have a junk guy inside of us. So no, just keep it. Just keep it a couple more years and you are probably going to use it. So I'm, I'm looking down the questions and somebody asked about any prop shops closing. Because of the virus, I don't know of any. I have heard of companies that closed and gave away props or um, Tabard had to, had to move their location. And so they gave away a bunch of things, both mm -hmm. props and costumes because they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't store them all. Um, and I did hear about just recently about the ACT costume shop. I'm not quite sure of the story there though. Um, oh, so artistic experience. I think Patricia has way more artistic experience than me. Uh, I, I don't I know like if, to draw. Yes, I have experience, but uh, I never, I, I'm, I'm a teacher. So uh, I work as a teacher for 10 years, uh, 10 years back in Argentina. Uh, but I love to work with my hand. Uh, so I do everything that comes to my mind to, uh, to be creative. Uh, but I, I don't have a formal formation in art, but I like to do hard work and do yeah. stuff and try everything. <laughs> so I can make this, I can make that. And that is why uh, I ended up doing this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I got a note, I, kind of confirming what I had heard separately, which is that the ACT, I don't think the ACT props are gone. I think their rentals are not going right yes, now, I think which, which I makes think sense to me. Rentals, you don't want people touching stuff because you don't know whether they've got COVID-19. So um, Sasha, you asked about, are there opportunities to assist with any upcoming productions? Oh, um, yes. We always need volunteers. Yeah, so that is how we start. It, uh, it's always good to volunteer. So if yeah. you're interested, we will keep it in mind. I will tell Sarah. But I mean, if anybody on this list here is interested in helping with props, even with the pandemic, there may be, like we said, chances where we need like the same copy of the same prop for four people. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's interesting and it's is uh, something that nobody does. I mean, it's not a lot of people who does prop. It's more like the hidden part of the theater, but it's really important. Uh, so you have, yes, to, you have to kind of love finding weird things mm -hmm. and thinking about stuff and saying, wow, how am I going to make a space helmet? But it needs to look like so a kid made it in his garage. Okay. What would I have? What would a kid have? What would they use? What would they think of? It's very, um, it's a lot of play. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and actually that's what I loved about Peter and the Starcatcher because the props were so weird. I could, I had kind of free reigned. So oh yeah, I one of up. my favorite is also a uh, gentleman's guy have like 2000 props, <laughs> I don't know, but the list was, uh, uh, long enough, but uh, I like more the fantasy kind of shows like Shrek, uh, that kind of thing that is really weird and it's not something that we use every day. So that is the old little shop of horror with the plant. I love that uh, puppet. Um, so I like to do that kind of weird stuff. So I think we are all the pro people is weird. <laughs> That's yeah. <the> yeah. <laughs> Gotta have a good sense of humor to yeah. be a props designer and yeah. and kind of patient and reminding people kindly not to touch someone else's prop <laughs> yeah. and fix things when they get broken. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. There was a question asking about um, 
maybe renting some of the props to other companies or we uh, rent, uh, renting them from other companies. Uh, do you have examples of, um, of that at all or how that works? We do. We do sometimes rent things, especially like uh, big objects t that people don't usually have. Like we have the iron lung. It's really a set piece, but an iron lung from what is that play? Anyway, there's a play that has an iron lung and we rented that. But a lot of times, especially if it's a props, you know, if it's another theater company and you know that person, it's more like trade or yeah. barter. We'll give yes. you this. We'll we'll yeah. loan you Next this. Next time this you show. are going to need something I I have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes is the rental goes more with the set pieces than the props, but sometimes it come with it. So for example, um, the the bench that they capitate the the performer, uh, they um they give us that, but that would be a, a set piece. And the head can be a prop that come with it. So sometimes the set piece brings some props too. But there is some companies who rent props. They have the yeah. whole show. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I oh, should oh, I should note though first gentleman's guy, I think we actually built the head, right? I think Michael Johnson. Yes, yes, yeah, we did it. Yeah, yeah. They, they did. didn't they didn't. But have a head just for as us. an example that sometimes the props come with the set too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? I'm looking at the comments. Yay. Thank you for enjoying the props. We appreciate, <laughs> we like it when people notice them and they look and go, oh, look, they have a real, whatever it is, old typewriter. Yeah. Um, yes, it takes time, but it's fun time. You have to go to antiques and yeah, garage sales and looking for stuff. Yeah. It takes yes. a, a lot of time. Yes. And Elise noted sometimes the cast is a good source for props. Yes, yeah. that is how I became a props And designer. all the family and friends and the neighbors and everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's like so, I keep so many things. I will always go, oh, wait, I have something like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anything else? I really want to encourage people if you are interested in props, you can write to us at SBMT, um, you know, just write to eStudio and we can get back to you because really like Patricia says, you could always use more people to help try and figure out how to make these props um, mm -hmm. or find them or buy them or whatever it is you have to do. And this is a beautiful community, all the backstage people. It's yeah. a nice community. We help each other and it's really, really nice. I'm very yeah. happy with doing this. Okay, any other questions? I guess that was it. Michael. Yeah, we did it. Thank you everybody <laughs> for uh, joining us tonight. Um, we encourage you to uh, uh, continue to uh, visit SBMT, all the different programs we have to offer. Um, if you have not already, please be a subscriber on our YouTube channel. Um, on Facebook group. Um, we also uh, are looking for sustaining donors. We're able to offer these programs on a regular basis for free. Um, and that's made possible by the donations from our lovely staff and crew and members of the community, and then uh, your sustaining donations. So if you can give five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever it is a month, that'll keep us going. And then as soon as we're able to safely do live productions again, we'll be able to do that. So thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Patricia. How wonderful to see both of you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank yeah. you so much for coming in and, and listening to us. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to get all the questions. Yeah. So, Hope to see you soon in person. Right. And, and, and Joe the Seagull says, so yeah. long. So long.